So this morning, I kind of want to talk about, you know, I tweeted out, you know, let's talk about why buying things doesn't make you happy uh, and how to fix that. And this is something that I'm kind of speaking from my own experience, uh, even current experience, because doing the podcast when we play video games, one of the things that I want to do is make sure we give good coverage of video games. And what that has led to in the past is buying a lot of games that I don't have time for. And then I wind up not being happy. But I think we all can relate to that, especially here in America. Like it's a very consumeristic culture. Like you look at any kind of advertisement and they want you to buy something, right? They want to, uh, they want to make you feel like your life is incomplete without whatever kind of product it is that they're selling. So some prayer. Thank you for the lurk, by the way, going to lurk and listen to this in the background while I work. No worries, man. Um, but that's what marketing is. And I actually went to school for graphic design. And so there's a little bit of marketing that was involved in that. And that's what we learned was when it comes to marketing stuff, you have to present it in a way that is appealing and in a way that makes the person that's viewing it think, oh man, I need that in my life. Right. But the truth is, it's not going to make you happy, you know, as Haplotti said, and man, you got to let me know if I'm mispronouncing your name. I really don't want to do that. Uh, buying things gives a temporary hit of dopamine. It does. It does. That's why there's a thing called retail therapy. I'm sure we've all heard that. And it does make you feel better for a time. Just hap works. Okay, cool. I'll just, call, I'll, we'll do that. Just hap. Um, but it doesn't work. It doesn't make us feel any better. We don't feel fulfilled. And I've been really examining that in my own life this year. Um, again, you know, with 2020 and the way that it's been, it's made it difficult for me to go to my local GameStop and stuff like that and get games or Walmart or whatever it is. Um, and that's been a blessing in a way. Um, Cause I'll look at games online and I'm like, I don't really want to spend a full price for this. I don't think it's worth that. But my thing is video games for you. It could be something else. Could be clothes. Could be literally anything. You can fill in the blank. But it never really makes us happy. And it goes back to where we're at here in the Ten Commandments. That I'm going to actually be teaching this uh, to my students on Sunday. You know, you shall not covet your neighbor's house or your neighbor's wife or his servant or his female servant, his ox, his donkey, anything that is your neighbor's. And that's what marketing does. That's what marketing does. Marketing gets you to covet something you don't have and gets you to think that you don't, that your life is incomplete without it. But the truth is we need to learn to be content, right? And so let me make sure that I've got my notes pulled up here because I want to, I want to make sure I don't gloss over things. Um, but like, especially this comes up as a content creator, right? There's a man, we, man, Hap, you've got it on point. Covetousness is idolatry. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. Oracle says that fits the new gen consoles perfectly you just have to have the mindset of i don't care rather or not i get it if it's god's will uh praise god if not praise god absolutely absolutely oracle that's the mindset i have um you know god saw it fit to provide me with a with one of the xboxes and um and so you know praise him for that but even if i didn't get one you know still praise him but when it comes to content creation man you i have to fight it you know a lot of you guys that are in content creation have to fight this almost probably weekly looking at kind of your your other content creators play and be like well, why don't i have why don't i have what he has right and we get into this thinking of well if i hit 500 followers which again thank you guys for that but if i hit 500 followers i'll be content but and again i'm a youth pastor so i'm going to use youth ministry illustrations you know miley cyrus has this song called the climb and there's a line in it that says always going to be another mountain i'm going to want to make it move always going to be an uphill battle Twitch, YouTube, please do not demonetize or copyright strike my video. Um, but it's so true, right? It's so true. Like we get in this mindset of like, well, if I get this, then I'll be okay. But once we get there, we find ourselves wanting more and more and more. And it's an endless cycle. We're never happy with it. And it goes back to this commandment. Do not covet. Because as Hap says, it's idolatry. We wind up wanting the thing more than we want well, we just wind up wanting the thing more than Christ. And the problem of it is when we, how do I unsub for quoting Miley Cyrus? Um, you can't, you're stuck. Sorry. 
And, uh, <laughs> but our contentment needs to be in Christ, right? And why is that? Because here's the thing about Christ. We don't ever earn his love, right? And so if we can't earn his love, it's not based on anything we've done or will do or are currently doing. So if it's not based on our effort, so to speak, and that means we can't lose it either because we did nothing to earn it. It's, it's a gift. Whereas these other things we're chasing after, we never really, you know, we always kind of tend to focus on the thing itself and we never stop to ask what happens when I get there, but also what happens if I lose it? Where's my identity at, right? And so our contentment needs to be in Christ because we can't lose it. We don't have a potential to lose Christ. Once we have Christ, we, we, we have him. And so this actually, oh, I forgot to bring up the other verse. Darn it. Well, I can bring it up here. We'll use this one because we've covered Exodus. So I'm going to hop over to John. And you guys are probably familiar uh, with this story here where Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. John 4, 13 through 14. Let me pop down here. I'm in the ESV, by the way. John 4, 13 through... There it is. Let me highlight these real quick. I'm surprised I don't have those highlighted already. Um... But so Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. She's talking about um, people coming to the uh, the well, drinking and things like that. And Jesus tells her, again, this is a very summarized version that I just gave. I would encourage you guys to go read that for yourself. It is, it's really good. Uh, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. So he's like, hey, anyone that comes to this well and drinks the water from it, they're going to be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Just constantly growing and constantly flowing, right? And in that same way, that's what happens when we chase after things. We keep going to these wells that we think are going to satisfy that thirst, but they never do. They never do. And guys, I'm preaching to myself just as much as I am to anyone else listening right now. Because I need to hear this. I need to be reminded of this this week. Because, again, as a content creator, like we tend to look at other people's plates and go, well, why don't I have as many followers as they do? Why don't I have the engagement that they do? But that's when God presented this one video that said, stop worrying about the numbers. Stop worrying about the numbers. Stop worrying about the followers. It's all about having an opportunity to impact others' lives. And if you can impact just one person's life, I think you're doing pretty well. And I'm like, I needed to hear that. And it led me to this verse. And we need... We need to stop going to these wells that just don't don't satisfy our thirst. Because our thirst is for God. And if we go to him, then we have the spring of life, so to speak. A spring of water welling up to eternal life, to, to use it more accurately worded. And if we stick with that, we can be content, which then goes into, or we'll kind of land the plane here. And this is a verse that honestly... <laughs> Let's just be honest. This is a verse that gets abused often, right? I think I mentioned it earlier and stopped myself because I'm like, hold up. But Philippians 4, again, this is what I've been reading in my own personal time. Philippians 4, 11 through 13 says, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be, to, to be content. Whatever situation. Whatever situation. Good and bad. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so this guy doesn't have chapter verse. I know I need to add it in there. <laughs> I keep having that on my to-do list, but I keep forgetting to do it. If someone wants to remind me, if one of my mods are here, or if one of you guys want to send me a discord message uh, to remind me to do that, I'll take care of that this afternoon. But, again, verse 13 gets taken out of context frequently. I've seen some students uh, apply that to their sports, and I'm like, mm. it's not necessarily what it's talking about in the context. In the context, it's talking about whatever situation you're in, you can get through it. Because Christ is strengthening you to not only endure those trials, but to grow from those trials as well. Or whatever situation you're in. And so we as Christians, we need to be content with what God has given us, what God has allowed us to have, and the things that we get to enjoy, 
you know? It's like I've said on the podcast a few times this year, you know, what a time to be alive in 2020. Um, referencing like how we've got these these consoles coming out. Um, there's just some other cool things happening, uh, whether in your own life or somewhere else. And, um, and people are like, dude, 2020 has been a rough year. How can you say like, you're having a good year, so to speak. It's like, I'm just, I'm trying to be content with what I've got. I'm trying to look at what God's given me and just enjoy it. I think later in this verse, it says, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say again, rejoice. And so that's what I'm trying to do. So here's the deal. If you're here tonight, today, I'm said tonight. If you're here today and you find yourself just being like frustrated because you're chasing after things that are just not fulfilling you. I would encourage you to seek Christ. And if you have questions about that, let me know. You can private message me. You can drop it in the chat. Uh, Again, you can do it in the Discord. You can private message me here on Twitch. But I want you to know that, you know, Christ died on the cross for your sins and mine to satisfy the wrath of God for Christians And he rose again three days later, defeating death, ascending to the right hand of God, ruling and reigning currently is where he's at. You can ask my pastor. He went to uh, Jesus' tomb last year. He can tell you Jesus is not there. He is up in heaven, ruling and reigning currently. And the good news is, is that you can have Christ today. You can have Christ today. And so if you have questions about that, if you'd like to, to know more about it, again, Leave some questions in the chat. Message me on Twitch. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop a comment. If you're in the Discord, hit me up there. Those kind of things. But guys, hopefully that's an encouragement to y'all to to seek Christ today um, and to not worry about the things that you don't have uh, and instead to be content with what you do have. Um, this is something that's been I've honestly been wrestling with all week. And so hopefully it's a it's an encouragement to you. It's a benefit to you. And um, and again, if you guys have questions or something, let me know. Uh, we've got a great community in the Discord. Uh, feel free to drop on over there. Exclamation point Discord. We'll get you a link. Um, but yeah, like I said, hopefully that's a good encouragement to you guys. 